everyone, welcome to another video by Crossmint. In this video, we'll be learning how to create custodial wallets for your users using Crossmint. This will be a very simple quick start tutorial that you can refer to in order to understand how to implement this for your own application. Started, ensure that you have a developer account created on Crossmint staging console, and we will be using the staging console and not the production console for this tutorial. So you need to head to staging.crossman.com in order to create an API key. So now that I'm already on the staging console, I simply need to hover my mouse over developers and then I need to click on API keys. So here you need to create a server side API key. So you need to click on create new key and you get to select different API key scopes that you want to pick. And the API key scopes determine the kind of access control that you will have for this API key. For example, if I were to create an API key with only read wallet as my API scope, then I will only be able to use it to fetch all the wallets for a user. And I will not be able to create new wallets or transfer assets with that API key. Since the goal for this video is to learn how to create wallets, we need to select three different scopes. They are read wallet, create wallet, and get NFTs. Once you've selected all the three different scopes, you need to click on create server key. And in a few seconds, your server key will be created. And you can see this on the table below server side keys. And you can see the first API key that is on this list is the key that I just created. Okay, so now that we have our API key, you need to open your code editor to write a simple JavaScript code to create a wallet for a user. So I'm going to quickly open my Visual Studio code and you need to create a new file. So let me create a new file and let me name it as wallets dot js which means it's a javascript code file so now let's quickly write the code and the code is very very straightforward so it begins with a constant variable declaration which is const options the options decide what kind of api call that you're making and what would be the body that you're passing through it and also the headers for it so the method is going to be post which means we are posting information to receive a particular outcome from an action. And now you need to declare headers. So we do that like this. And then you need to pass two separate headers. One would be X API key. And so here within double quotes, you basically enter your API key. I'm going to leave this empty for now. And you also need to declare content type so the content type decides what kind of content that the application is going to be receiving. So that would be a JSON file. So you need to type application backslash JSON. After this, you need to pass a body. So that would be body colon. And within single quotations, you need to pass the body. So, so that would be email. So here you give your email. Let me give the email as my alternate email, which I do not have a wallet for. Once I have entered my email, you need to declare another variable that will be passed, which is the chain. So this determines which chain that you're creating a wallet on. So I'm going to set it as, let's say Polygon. So for all EVM chains, this remains the same regardless of which chain you specify but if you were to create it for a non-evm chain like solana then you need to mention explicitly saying that it's on solana and once you've declared the body i can close this options and now you need to use a function called fetch so this is where you'll be fetching an endpoint and passing options to it to see what response it would return so the endpoint would be https colon backslash staging dot crossment dot com backslash api backslash v1 hyphen alpha one hyphen wallets and since i mentioned you also need to be passing options and this is what will make the function call and now you need to determine what it would return. So if the response is, let's say response 
dot json then you need to log the response so we do it by using another then function and within this then function you need to again check for response and you need to console.log the response that you just received and now you also need to declare a catch function just in case there was an error so if there is an error then you need to console.log the error and now you can save this file also note that we did not populate one particular header which was api key so i'm simply going to copy and paste the api key that i just created please understand that this is not a secure way to store or configure api keys directly within your code so please follow the best security practices when it comes to handling server-side api keys because if someone were to get access to your server-side keys they can essentially use these api keys to manipulate your existing collections or even use it for their own benefit and then bill you for it so please follow the best practices since it's on staging it does not really matter so i'm directly pasting it here so now we can simply run this code so in order to run this you need to type node wallets.js in your terminal and let's see what response it returns it usually takes a few seconds for it to create a wallet for the email that you entered and there you go the wallet was successfully created it says the chain is polygon and this is the public key which is nothing but your public address for the wallet that was created now if we go back to the staging console and click on wallets you can notice that there was one particular wallet that was just created and you can find the user id here along with the public address you can also note that it's on evm and you can see when it was created which is today february 19th 2024 so this means our api call was successful if you want to understand where i got this code from all you need to do is navigate to docs.crossman.com so let me show you what it looks like so i'm going to open crossman documentation you need to look for wallets and under wallets you need to look for custodial wallets since we are creating wallets based on a user's email address and you need to click on quick start once you scroll down you'll be able to find the curl code and the javascript code that you can use within your application so if you want to refer to the code you can navigate to the documentation and get the code from there and this is how you can use Crossman's wallet APIs to create wallets for your users. Now you can customize this call however you like. You can also configure it in such a way that you trigger the create wallet API call when a user signs into your Web3 application using their email address. And that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you for watching.